Good morning, good afternoon. It's Laura Hart from RoboFun, and I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Tom Lowers, who is the founder of BirdBrain Technologies. How are you, Tom? I'm great. Thank you for inviting me on, Laura. Sure, sure. It's always so interesting to hear what you're up to. Um, Tom is a, um, your field is computer science before, as you developed this, correct? So Tom is a yeah. PhD in computer science and has amazing products that his little company has created. And he's going to tell us all about that today. Uh, what I'm going to tell you before we get started is a little bit about RoboFun. We mm -hmm. offer creative programs for children to love, to learn, to love, to learn. Um, using leading edge technologies, uh, robotics, uh, some of Tom's products, some of Lego's products. Um, and we offer summer camp and we're about to have a open house that will explain and show you about our summer camp. And that open house, if you go to our website, uh, we should have, and if we haven't, we will soon create a button to lead you to Eventbrite. Um, and it is next Sunday, the 5th of June, from 11 to 2 in New York City. We're located in New York City, and we run programs in you know, over 100 schools in the New York City area, as well as our studio at 102nd and Broadway. So we run classes, camps, private lessons, field trips, uh, birthday parties, all sorts of things in the studio, but then also at schools around New York City. But right now, we're about to have summer camp. And that's our big thrust right now. And summer camp lasts for a week at a time. And if you go to robofund.org, you'll find out more. And if you sign up for our mailing list, you'll get a mailing from me twice a week in which I tell you about what we're working on. And occasionally we have like trial days. Hey, we're trying a new curriculum. We want to drop your child off for free for two hours, um, that type of thing. And um, we'd love to stay in touch with you. Uh, Tom and I met a couple of years ago uh, at a conference where I was winning an award and Tom was winning an award, but we didn't really know about each other. Yeah. And uh, I was really blown away with Tom's work. So Tom, do you want to tell us about your work? And yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. So I, um, I started Bird Brain Technologies 12 years ago. Our, our 12th birthday is June 1st, actually. So Congratulations. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of crazy to think that it's been 12 years, but um, it spun out of my PhD work. So I have a PhD in robotics, technically, is the subfield of computer science that my PhD is in. And my work was in educational robotics. And so as part of that research process, um, you know, the lab I was in developed a couple of tools for computer science education on, on the one hand and for kind of arts and STEAM integration with robotics on the other hand. And so when I graduated, I thought, well, these tools, you know, we've worked with teachers and students for four or five years. They're pretty mature now. So let's see if we can make them into products. And so in 2010, I, I started BirdBrain Technologies to do exactly that. And like I said, it's been a 12 year ride. So our mission is very classroom oriented. It's to inspire deep and joyful learning experiences for all students. And that for all students is really um, by working with schools and after school providers like RoboFun to use our tools to create those learning experiences. So mm -hmm. in a way, I think of the learning experience as actually the, the thing that we're trying to create or catalyze with, with our products and with our tools. So, I love your tagline. Deep okay. and joyful learning is, yeah. is a beautiful, beautiful tagline. It took eight years to get there. <laughs> it was always there, but you know, sometimes it takes a long time to actually condense something into yep. one sentence. Yep. Yep. Um, so, so yeah. So, let me give you a very quick overview of of both of our products. So, we have the Hummingbird Robotics Kit, which is a microcontroller that looks like this, with ports for servos, motors, LEDs, sensors. And then the idea is that students will combine all of those parts um, to build animatronics or robotics out of arts and crafts or other cardboard materials, things like that. So it's very much kind of artistic and creative robotics um, appropriate for roughly fourth grade up through high school. So we support it with both blocks programming for younger students and text-based programming for older students. Cool. And then uh, 
what I'll spend With most time. With fund used throughout. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Throughout the pandemic, we ran a lot of online classes and actually we're continuing to use these products and they worked incredibly well. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was a great like collaboration that we started right in, I think, April or May of 2020, where it was like, let's let's figure out how to do this virtually. Let's ha let's okay. try to do these hands on robotics um, camps and, you know, send a kid out to somebody at home and and have a tutor or facilitator kind of yep. lead them through the process. It worked really well. Yes, it did. Um, so uh, so the um, the title, I guess, of today's talk is Hands-On Math with the Finch Robot. Yes. And yes. so this is a Finch Robot. So uh, unlike the Hummingbird Kit, it's pre-assembled. And it has a, a bunch of different features. It has a distance sensor, line sensors, light sensors, has an accelerometer so it can tell how it's oriented um, in space. It has encoders, which means that the wheels can drive a specific distance and turn a specific distance. And then it has um, a lot of LEDs. So an LED in the beak, four in the tail here that can be any color. And then this LED screen, which is on uh, something called a micro bit, which we've designed all of our products around. And so, so, you, so you've designed all your products around the BBC micro bit. Yes. So the most recent versions, I should say, because right. no, that's good yeah. because uh, uh, you know there's this big um, effort <laughs> in my field. You know, Lego is sort of the big player that everyone loves, um, and yet they're prohibitively expensive. Um, and the BBC Microbit is now a, a standard product, which means yeah. that if you buy your products, you're not buying the thing that was developed two weeks ago and may not be around in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. I, I mean, the micro bits really impressed me when I first saw them in, in 2016. And at that time we had kind of older hardware versions of both Hummingbird and Finch. And so I set to work figuring out how to re reimagine the products to build around it. Um, we do some things with it that are unusual. So, for example, with the Finch robot, um, you know, the micro bit is supported in a programming environment called Make Code, which is a very nice environment. It's blocks and it has a toggle switch into Python and JavaScript, so you can kind of switch back and forth. Um, but one of the things that's not as great about it is it is you you kind of have to compile the program and then download it to the robot, and then you see it run and do its mm -hmm. program. So, in terms of that. You know, for a beginner who is trying to explore with code, right? You know, live coding the way you would in Scratch is actually, a, I think, a much more compelling thing where you instantly see things happen. And so we have our, we've developed kind of our own programming environments. You know, in addition to Make Code, which you can use with Finch or Hummingbird, we've developed our own programming environments that um, use blocks but connect over Bluetooth, so that when you tap on a block or click a block. Uh, you instantly see that happen. And it also expands the the usefulness to tablets as well as computers. So it works with- That's big, that's big. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's the Finch. So- So the, before you go on, yeah. um, what ages are you using the Finch with? I mean, what I like about Tom's company uh, from the point of view uh, of somebody who runs a company that does the service, but not the product is that Tom really takes care of lots and lots of the pieces uh, mm -hmm. of what are you going to buy, showing you exactly what you're going to buy. But then you have a lot of videos for how do you actually use it with yeah. kids. And it's, it's amazingly responsible for educators who don't have a lot of time. They can just hop into your site and get a lot of ideas and lesson plans. So, and I don't yeah. work for Tom. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is our kind of, that's why I say like what we're trying to do is the learning experience, right? So when, what that means from a product development point of view is what do you need to develop to make it, to make those learning experiences in the classroom happen as frequently as well as possible. And so that means you can't just have uh, some hardware and throw it into the classroom. Yep. You can't even just have hardware with software. Yep. Um, you need you need professional development courses. Yep. You need activity ideas. You need yep. tutorials. And so, yeah, we have all of that. Um, and yeah, I mean, that, that has taken a decade 
of building. You know, it, it certainly didn't look like that in 2010 or 2011. It was much more like, here's the hardware and software and some text pro text instructions, right. you know. But right. now we're, yeah, now we've got some some great materials, I think. It takes a lot of time walking the steps of what's a what is it like being a teacher in a classroom? Mm -hmm. Or if you're working with homeschool groups, what's it like being in a smaller group as a parent or as a support person in a homeschool group? And, and I just, find, yeah. I mean, there's that. there's been kind of a natural evolution also of which teachers used our products, where mm -hmm. at the beginning it was the highly enthusiastic early adopters who were willing to put up with some stuff that didn't, you know, wasn't perfectly explained or well explained. Right. But at right. this point, we really focused on like anybody can do this and we want anybody to be able to do this and we want to make sure they have the resources to do it. So speaking of having the resources, you have this very cool loan program. Do you want to tell our audience about the loan program? Yeah. So with the Finch robots, um, so in 2013, with an older version of them, we started a loan program where we put a thousand robots into this program and allowed uh, any teacher or librarian to apply to check them out, any teacher in the US, I should say, um, because of international shipping. Um, and so in that program, since inception, we've reached over 200,000 students, over 1,300 organizations, schools or libraries have borrowed robots from us. Uh, and it's completely free. It's, you know, its intention is to, you know, provide access to these tools without a financial barrier. Um, because, you know, that's our mission, right? It's for all students. And while we are a for-profit company and we, you know, we need some product sales to be sustainable, um, we were able to fund this program kind of from some of those profits. And, uh, I'm very happy to say that although it took sort of kind of a half break in the pandemic because it was hard to get loans out and get them back, right. Right. Um, it is back and we've got a thousand of the Finch 2 robots. So these robots that came out in December of 2020, we've got a thousand of them out at schools right now. And we are accepting applications also at this moment for next year. So if you teach or are at a library or at, an, you know, a community organization where you'd like 10 or 15 of these robots to show up for two months, uh, you can apply. It's um, So you actually give them a flock of them. Yep. No pun intended, yep. but actually you call them yep. flocks. We do so call them. I'm thinking one, but so if I'm a first grade teacher and I really like this, I could get 10 or 15 in my classroom for two months. Mm -hmm. yeah. How would now I do we, it? Where so, would I go? Um, so if you go to our website, birdbraintechnologies.com and you go to the footer, there's a link to the Finch loan program. Um, so it's just, it's also just birdbraintechnologies.com slash Finch dash robot dash loan dash program. Um, and there is an application form. And so we do screen applicants. We typically accept, depending on the year, 50 to 70% of our applications. And we are specifically looking for um, basically who are you serving with this loan? Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, would they be able to get access to the robots in other ways? Right, um, sure. Or, well, that and how good is your implementation plan? So what mm -hmm. is your, like, how are you going to maximize this loan, do the most you possibly can with it? Mm -hmm. um, so we want to see both of those. And like our ideal loans are like, you know, we're going to serve students, you know, a thousand students who otherwise would never have had a chance to program a robot. Uh, we're going to do it in two months and we're going to give them a really meaningful experience and here's how we're going to do that that's the perfect application have you um you know we to my audience we prepare these things in advance and then my mind always goes places that i haven't prepared my interviewee do you have any videos that show the use of them and we could come back to this in a few weeks but it really be fun to see the effect of this amazing program yeah i think um i mean we've it's sort of like embedded in our Twitter feed, you know, so it's okay. ephemeral. Ephemeral. Yep. I don't necessarily have ones from a long time ago, though they would show the older robot, the older sure. version. Of sure. Sure. But yeah, I mean, I've I've seen, you know, occasionally there'll be a, a local news article. Um, I'll get, I think, a couple of research papers have actually come out of it. So, wow. yeah, it's it's had a clear impact. That's that's really cool. So um, 
Tom and I are involved in another project together. Uh, so mm-hmm. once Tom and I met and I saw his amazing products and uh, I was like, I want to use these products with my kids in schools or in different places. Um, and we work together with Teachers College, Columbia University, Dr. Irina Lublinskaya, who will come on in a few weeks again. She was an early person to the heart to heart. Uh, uh, Dr. Irina teaches uh, STEM and education mathematics. And um, we wrote a grant that was funded by the National Science Foundation, which is mm-hmm. super exciting. Um, in which we are trying to improve the teaching of mathematics to first, second, and third graders in uh, two different populations um, of a school primarily with black kids is one of the populations and a school primarily with Hispanic kids is the other population. Both are, are in New York City. And the tool that we will be using is the Finch Um so how do we improve robotics? I, excuse me. How do we improve mathematics through yeah. using robotics? So, yeah. um, I'm, I'm so excited about that. Uh, I, and it's it's really interesting timing because I've been thinking about math and the Finch 2 in particular for about a year. And we're going to be making a lot of activities around this over the next year, kind of in addition, not just at the first to third grade level, but also for for older students, because there's just so many obvious connections, natural connections. And, you know, we want to talk about it as hands on mathematics, right? And right. I think for a lot of students, that's really much more motivated than, you know, doing doing problem sets. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that's going to be really interesting is a, a, a big part of this grant is that I'm I, I love making curriculum. It's my favorite thing. But in this case, I will be making it, but the teachers are going to be making it primarily. And so the first whole year of the grant, and we'll probably check in during the year with some of the teachers and have them on here, possibly with you, Tom, uh, showing what we've created. Um, our first uh, professional development uh, with our teachers is in August. And um, I am super excited about that. But do you want to show the Finch and some like how it moves and different things for our audience who know nothing about it? Yeah, I'll do my best here. And I'm going to show the um, programming environment that sure. you would use in first, second or third grade. OK, and so I'm going to share my screen here. And I'll turn on my Finch also. So I'm turning it on here. And I'm so this is a, a web app, which is this newish technology that allows us to connect from the browser and allows us to connect to two hardware devices from the browser. Um, so the nice thing about that is it doesn't require installation. This same interface is also available on iOS and Android tablets. So if they wanted to use a, an iPad, they could just install the Finchblocks app instead. So we call this Finchblocks. It's icon based. And so when I connect to the robot, it um, makes a little connection sound. And then I actually have three levels. And I've been coding, so I had a, a, lot of, um, a lot of things open. But in level one, we're just focused on the idea of an algorithm being a sequence of steps. So the blocks are atomic. There's no parameters. But we can quickly you know, start making something that looks like a square. Uh, and I can tap on an individual block and it'll make my finch wheels move, which is a little hard to see, admittedly. Or I can, you know, tap on the sequence of blocks and it'll highlight which thing is happening right then. Or I can put it on this flag and then activate things from the flag if I want to. So I can control, you know, movement, but with some significant limitations, right? I can only turn 90 degrees. I can only go forward in 15 centimeter increments. Um, I can turn on the beak for a second, uh, but I don't know how long, like it's basically one second and I can't control that. So once I go to level two, now I can get into, okay, well, how far do I wanna travel when I go forward? Well, let's, let's go 60 centimeters, right? And this is, here's a really obvious math connection. How much do I wanna turn? 
Well, let's turn 45 degrees. Oh, so, so, you know, think of a first or second grader exploring with this. Okay, they see, they see this, then they see that that's how much of a circle that's going to turn. Oh, that's and then a they see beautiful the interface. Yeah. yeah, beautifully done. Um, so now, you know, if I wanted to make a triangle, maybe I would just do 10 centimeters and turn, well, how much would I want to turn? You know, like 120 is technically what you want to do. Um, but they'll probably explore it for a while and see what happens, right? And maybe they click this three times, or maybe they figure out that, oh, yeah, they can do it. Um, like they can just keep going. Right. Um, and then level three is where things get really interesting. So here we have a few new blocks. Let me just get rid of all the blocks that are out so that to talk about them. So we now have some basic control blocks. And these control blocks include things like loops. So if they wanted, so one of the activities that people often do with Finch blocks is to have it draw a polygon or a shape, an equilateral triangle or a hexagon. Well, um, wait, wait a minute. Bef when you say draw, um, is there a way for the kids to actually draw? Yes. So there is a hole in the center and there are these markers. Ah. Uh, these are like paintbrush markers. You can stick other pens or markers in as well, but we found that these work really well. So we include them in our flock kits now or flock bags. And yeah, you can just, um, you know, stick the, uh, oops, stick, stick the marker the right in. in. The belly, and then as it, as it moves, it It'll draw. draws a line, leaves a line. Yeah, yeah so it will, it will definitely draw those shapes. Um, so yeah, you can, you know, if, if you wanted to make a hexagon with one of these repeat loops, you could maybe do it six times, right? And Maybe I'll go forward and I'll turn instead of 90 degrees, I might figure out I need to turn 60 degrees. The other thing you can do in, in level three is control the speed of your movements. So I can up or down the speed. Okay. Um, some other things you can do in, in here, there's like, there's this block, which lets you move forward until you see something in front of you. Mm -hmm. So if I did something like that, I might, um, you know, so if I had this loop running, so it's driving forward and then got close to my laptop. So now it's just blue and it's highlighting which block is, is happening at that moment too. Oh, that's very nice. Like a so, tracing feature. So could you add a sound at that point? Like when, so it's a distance sensor sensing distance. Is that how it's yep. working? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there's a sound block. Um, the sound block is actually in all levels, but again, like how much control you have over it mm -hmm. uh, goes up. So in, in level one, there's just five specific notes that you can do. Whereas here you've got a whole keyboard and you can select notes. And then the other thing you can do is have events. So this is a sound sensor. So if it, if I clap or I talk loud into it, okay. it triggers the sound. Yeah. Wow. There's so many different ways you can push this. It's, yeah. it's an amazing tool. Um, and I mean, then, sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> uh, and I mean, this is, this is the most introductory programming level, right? So, right. or programming environment. Um, we have blocks-based levels that let you make much more complex behaviors and also make you let you make more complex math connections, right? So there's in, in Snap, for example, you can have an array or a list of values. You could record a hundred sensor data points take the average, take the min, take the max, you know, do that kind of math operation, but on something that's real, um, real data you just collected. Um, so I think uh, another way to say this is it's appropriate for math sort of pre-K through maybe 12th grade. Is that how high you feel? I think, uh, I mean, for, for computer science, we say kindergarten to college, and we mean that, you know, you can use Java and Python, you can do mm -hmm. AI, you can, mm -hmm make an app. 
for math connections, I certainly think you can get into high school. There's, you know, interesting things you can do with the encoders and geometry with mm -hmm. radians. Mm -hmm. um, algebra, trigonometry are, I'm not, I haven't seen any calculus, but actually you could probably do things like measure the accelerometer values and then integrate to get velocity, you know, of your movement. So yeah, there's no reason you couldn't do stuff like that. Some creative calculus teacher will come along, find the tool and, and yep. add to the library of cool things to do with your products. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, um, do you want to show us any more? I have a couple more questions for you. Yeah, I mean, I think the the thing to note about a lot of this is we have lots of activities, right? So oh, yes. here's our full list of just worked out activities and, you know, Finch on the number line, exponents and loops, the finding speed with Finch, those obviously, those will have math connections. Not all of them do. Some of them like Finch tails have ELA connections or you know, there's there's other ways to connect the Finch into other um, subjects. Um, but yeah, this is just a very quick overview of all of all of the activities that we have so far. Like I said, I'm very interested in particular in in the math kind of strand because mm -hmm. you know I went to NCTM uh, the regional in March for the first time. It's a conference I'd never been to. That's the yeah, tell yeah. us what that is. Yeah, yeah, so it's a National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Mm -hmm. And there really was not much of a presence of any kind of robotics. There was a good amount of manipulatives for hands-on math. Mm -hmm. um, and I think those are fantastic. I'm, I'm really happy that that's present in the trade show. Um, but I think there's a lot of potential to kind of expand on that, especially once you include you know, the capabilities of programming environments to do data analysis and, you know, basically, yeah, like there's there's a lot of math you can do inside a programming environment, as, as you know. Well, a year from now, maybe we should go together and present our initial lesson plans. So, yeah, um, well, I'll be I'll be at the national one in September. Um, all right. A little too soon. I think we're yeah. just training our team, but a year we'll probably do the next one, too. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the interesting things about this grant that uh, I'm excited about um, is that we're thinking of the Finch as one more resource in a classroom. Like you have the station with Cuisinart, Cuisinart Rod, you have the station with this and that. And so we're working on a very different philosophy than I'm used to. And I'm really curious to see how it works, which is short activities, but a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So 10, 15 minute activities every day for a week. Um, and I'm really curious how our teachers are going to feel about that versus one 45 minute or one hour long. And I have really mixed feelings and I, and I think it's not about my feelings. It's what's going to work well with the kids. Yeah. I mean, you, you never know until you, you try it. Right. So right. that's, that's right. the whole purpose of trying it. And that's the wonderful thing about, you know, NSF research. Yes. It, you know, it gives you the space and the time to really, figure this out instead of yes. just making assumptions. Yep, exactly. So it will be cool to see. So I have a couple more questions before we wrap up. Where did the name Bird Brain Technologies come from? And I think it's really cool. Yeah, Maybe so uh, I mean, the name came in part from the, the products already having names before the company had a name. Uh, and okay. so in 2005, when I first joined the Create Lab where I did the educational robotics work, we started working on an air quality sensor called Canary. So we named okay. it Canary. And then the next thing was the Finch. And it was like, well, this little robot needs a, a name and a theme. So let's let's keep with the small birds. And then, okay. you know, so that became Finch. And then the next thing became Hummingbird. And then I had to start a company that had a bird name because <laughs> there was no other way to do it. Right. And I, I mean, I'm kind of self-deprecating. So I, I picked something a little humorous. That's good. That's very good. So I would highly recommend Tom's products. Um, and I'm constantly going to the website uh, as I prepare for working with my teachers. And I'm just really amazed at all the resources you've put together. So thank you. Yeah. Um, and a couple more um, housekeeping things about RoboFun. Uh, we're getting ready for an unbelievable summer and we will probably be using the Fitch uh, in the summer 
Mm -hmm. um, but we have robotics. We have what we call little engineers with pre-K kids. Uh, we have coding with both a language called Scratch and Python. And we have developed some really cool curriculums using Minecraft to understand circuitry. So if any of these are of interest to you, um, come and come to our open house on the 5th. If you have a child who is not an early adapter and needs to get used to new environments, it's great to come on the 5th. Uh, we basically have like a little steam fair from 11 in the morning till two in the afternoon. And uh, we'd love to have you. We are at robofun.org and we are in real life at 102nd and Broadway. And um, the last thing I wanna say is that my uh, social media people are always like, if you like the video, share it and it helps us. And I, I feel like Ira Glass uh, listening to his podcast. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I think that Tom, we should come back in a couple months and see how things are and what you're up to. It, well, okay. and that's a good last question. So, do you have? Are you thinking of another product? Yeah. So one reason we went to NCTM is because we are um, working on some math products that uh -huh. we'll be announcing more broadly in July. Okay. Um, but basically, focusing on on elementary math with oh. um, with. Mani sort of digital manipulatives, so not okay. robotics, but digital manipulatives. But we think cool. the Finch will complement it nicely also because, you know, that'll give us kind of a suite of different activities to do with different students. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, so watch our website in a month and a half or so. All right. Well, maybe you have to come back in August and show it to, to yeah. a larger audience. So mm -hmm. thank you so much and have a great day. All right. Thank you, everybody.